The Stairs to the Attic by Randy Savage. This is a story from my childhood and one that is still vivid to me to this day. I lived in Arkansas as a child and my neighbors had a house behind ours, nestled a little ways back in the tree line. This house, as I came to find out, had quite the history. The ground that our houses were located on was apparently the site of a battle between the Native Americans and the settlers. My neighbors had quite the collection of arrowheads and musket balls that they had dug up over the years, enough to rival many smaller museums. My neighbor's house itself was also a makeshift hospital during the Civil War. As a child, I did not realize the historical significance, but still thought that it was very cool. We got along great with my neighbors. Our moms chatted and my friend and I hung out, always during the day. We played video games together, traded Pokemon cards, typical stuff for a five and a seven year old. They also had two big dogs, a Doberman and a Dalmatian. They liked me after they got to know me and accepted me as part of the family. We would play with them when we got tired of the video games. One day there was a pack of junkyard mutts, about five strong, that had wandered up from the trailer lot down the road. They charged my friend and I. My friend's dog took them all on and sent them scurrying away. They were fearless. One day I was invited to stay the night. His parents were out of town for the weekend. His big sister was going to watch us and I was super excited. My parents were fine with it because she was older and they were only about 150 feet from where our house was. It was my first sleepover as a child and I was looking forward to a night of soda, Cheetos, and Mario Kart. I had always noticed the stairs to the attic were blocked off with large boxes and other items, but I never asked what was up there. When I mentioned it to my friend, he got quiet. He said, they never go up there, and he changed the topic. After a while of playing the Nintendo, we watched some Dragon Ball Z, and then started getting ready for bed. He called his Doberman into the room, and his sister across the hall called the Dalmatian into hers. I hadn't had a dog and I thought that this was really cool. Then he goes over to the door and casually locks it and his dog laid down in front of it. I asked him why he locked it and he said it just made him feel more comfortable. It got late and as we started to nod off, I heard a thump from the upstairs. The houses in my town were mostly older so I was used to the occasional odd noise. Then it happened again. I looked over to my friend and his eyes were wide open and both he and his dog were silent. I looked to his dog and he was staring at the door, hackles raised. By then I felt the hairs on my neck raised and my instincts were telling me to run and to get out of the house as quickly as possible. I started to get off the pallet I had made on the floor and my friend shook his head at me. I could feel the tears forming, but I stayed silent and still. I heard a door slowly creaking open, and then his dogs started going wild, bared teeth, hackles up, ready to take down whatever is coming. The bumping stopped, and the dogs stopped barking. His Doberman was still at the ready. Then came the crash. It sounded like whatever was upstairs had jumped or fallen over the railing onto the floor. His dog jumped back from the door, tail tucked, and he started making the weirdest whining noise I have ever heard. Something was shuffling right outside of his door. I don't remember what happened next. I think I passed out from pure terror. When I woke up, it was morning and I got out of there. I thought it had been a dream until I saw my friend again and I asked him what had happened. He said it didn't occur often, but that was the reason that he had locked the door. He explained that he didn't have much company over at all and I was the first one to spend the night. I was never in their house for more than an hour after that and always in the broad daylight with his parents home. They moved about nine months after the incident to a house that they had built. I don't know if their move was related or not. After they moved, an older couple bought the house and they had grandkids my age. Something felt different about the house after they moved in, or so I thought until I spent a second night there four years later. 
but that's another story.